Welcome to Up Close and Personal. My name is Jackie Holland, and I am so delighted to be with you. You know, we love being with you each week on our programs, and, and we love hearing from you. We, we enjoy so much just getting your mail and your calls, and we love the praise reports as well. You know, God is for you, and He said, if He is for you, then who can be against you? The Lord has great plans for you. There are somebody watching tonight and you're wondering, what am I gonna do with my life? Will, I, will anything good ever happen to me? Well, listen, I'm gonna tell you that the Lord is no respecter of persons and He cares about you and He's got a great plan. There is a destiny for you. And you know, I guess every little girl has dreamed of becoming a princess or a queen or or, or, or a movie star or some, something that's just out of this world. Well, you're, you're gonna be so blessed. We truly have a queen with us. I am so honored, I'm almost speechless, really. I know that it's not good to get, you know, just get so caught up in that, but I mean, who would have thought that on Up Close and Personal, our very own Queen of Uganda, in Uganda, would be with us. But see, God knows, and He loves you so much. She's got a word for you, and she's going to share all about the work that she does, and uh, she's just so beautiful. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I'm going to read just a little bit about you and your work. Um, Her Royal Highness Queen Sylvia Nagenda. She is a traditional and cultural leader of the people of Uganda, the largest kingdom in the country of Uganda. Her Royal Highness Sylvia Nagenda is held in high esteem and commands great respect. She envisions a Uganda with good social and cultural values that cares, feeds and educates its people and where men and women have opportunities to work their way out of poverty regardless of their social background. She works passionately to fulfill her vision by initiating and tirelessly supporting many activities designed to combat poverty, disease, and ignorance that especially victimizes society's most vulnerable citizens, which is small children, young people, women, and disabled. Her Royal Highness is touring the United States to create awareness and support of her trust fund, a development-focused non-governmental organization designed to accelerate social and economic development in Uganda by improving early childhood care and development, educating opportunities for girls, prevention and cure of childhood diseases, nutrition, adolescent reproductive health, including HIV and AIDS prevention, vocational training and employment, and I can, and I can truly say, and on and on and on. She is a goodwill amb ambassador for the United Nations Fund for Population Activities, the patron of Christian Children's Fund of Uganda and Special Olympics of Uganda. My goodness. And you're pretty besides. Thank you very much, Jackie. Um, being a queen, so to speak, um, it's, I think it's more of what it is that a person wants to do for the people, mm -hmm. for, for, for her community or his community, mm -hmm. and uh, in this case for her community. So it's um, not so much of how you look or how beautiful it is. Of course people always have their own perceptions of how, or what a queen should look like or what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to talk. So in this case, I think it's more or less bearing in mind uh, doing what a queen should do, not necessarily feeling or looking how a queen mm -hmm. should look, because I don't even know how a queen is supposed to look. I, I really believe that the Lord guides our life, and He puts people in prominent places mm -hmm. because He has a work for them to do. That's right. And I truly believe for such a time as this that God mm -hmm. Himself has raised you up you, your heart is to help hurting women and children, and you do that in many ways. So, what are some of the ways that uh, that uh, you're working with the women there in Uganda? In Uganda, um, we we'll work with, uh, as you mentioned before, working with women, young people, and uh, children, and mainly in the areas of health and education. We try to. Uh, particularly as far as maternal health is concerned, 
uh, today you find that um, many women in Uganda die during delivery or mm -hmm. actually during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is to encourage them to use uh, healthcare services. Mm -hmm. This is something that is often ignored and this, is, this may be because they don't have healthcare services close by or they may just decide to, to not, not to use them. So that's one of the things that uh, in my advocacy and social mobilization is to encourage them to use maternal health uh, services. And also beyond that actually, uh, when the children are born, to how do they take care of kids, the nutrition aspect of it, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that our children are actually protected and, uh, and taken uh, care of. And then we try to also empower women. Uh, we do focus a lot on those on, 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 the, on young people and women who have had little or no formal education mm -hmm. and uh, try to empower them with uh, uh, skills or even um, through the microfinancing projects, giving them small loans so that they can create uh, projects and, this, and, the, and the projects they create will be, enable them to feed um, children, feed their children, educate mm -hmm. them. Um, as you know, uh, women, are actually a major force in our in our country, uh, as it is in so many other countries. In Uganda, they are the largest um, contributors towards our agriculture sector, and ag agriculture is actually the foundation of our economy. So, and women actually are sixty percent of the labor force. So, if they are not well, this obviously impacts on our mm -hmm. uh, economy. Therefore, we try to, and obviously, a, a country that has uh, uh, a good healthcare system uh, that in includes uh, providing for women and children and the youth will have people who will participate and contribute to the development of the country. So we try to help in, in, in those different areas, assist um, in, in the different areas. Uh, how, did, how did you come about setting up this okay. organization? Well, given the many problems that we have in our society today, there is a need, and these are the issues that we have, the challenges we have in education and health uh, among our children and the women and youth. There's a need for many of us to, to, to play a role in addressing these issues. So I did find myself in a position where I could actually make a difference, and I had the desire to do so. So I decided to... Uh, uh, found the Navagelka Development Trust and it's through this trust that we help or uh, assist uh, different people to uh, especially by engaging them in poverty alleviation uh, efforts. You know I think no matter what country we're in people need role models and they need someone that I mean we don't want idols, but we want role models, someone to look up to and say, you know, I can, I want to do something to make a difference. And it's possible for every person to make a difference right where they're at. Actually, I must say that in, in uh, when, when I became the Navigator back in 1999, I didn't really know what to expect and I didn't really expect for, to, to be any kind of role model or such. I went to int into it without so much expectations. I didn't even know that I would be accepted by the people. So I just um, basically accepted to get married mm -hmm. to the king. And then, however, did God did have a plan. And uh, that plan, I think, is what is unveiling right now. Mm -hmm. And you find that um, people are extremely warm and children do look up to Mm -hmm. look up to me mm -hmm. and sometimes I really wonder what is it I'm not because I I'm, I just work doing what I feel that I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. without sometimes knowing the kind of impact that it might actually be making in, in our communities mm -hmm. and that's probably so. just as well because then you don't carry that full responsibility on you mm -hmm. but I'm sure that many little girls dream of being you know d like you and doing the work that you do. I can remember even as a little girl, I was um, at six years old, I was sitting in a little country church and there was a lady singing a song. And, um, and I suppose she was a preacher, but uh, she was singing the song and it was just so precious. She was singing like, 
I'd like to kneel down and talk it all over with him. And I'd like to say, Lord, you loved me when the path was so dim. And I can.